Hey guys, so first off, I just want to say, I don't know if you can see in the camera, but I got a black eye, but it's much better now than what it was. But, um, so I'm here in Brazil. I didn't get into a street fight or anything. I got it, uh, during a jujitsu class. So I guess just so you're aware of that, but, um, but anyway, so this video is about, um, browser tips for QuickBooks online and specifically with Google Chrome. And I would say I'm pretty confident saying that it's pretty universally accepted that the best browser that's most likely recommended by pretty much everybody is Google Chrome. Um, and I'll show you why in this video and I'll show you some kind of tips you can use within Google Chrome to really help you out in your everyday workflow within QuickBooks Online. Um, I would say probably, um, so we'll start out with the tabs. That's a really big one. So a really useful thing that I use all the time in QuickBooks Online is duplicating tabs in, Gro in Google Chrome within uh, QuickBooks. So here I'm just from the regular dashboard here in QuickBooks Online. And if you double click in the tab up here, you'll see this duplicate option. And if you click that, it'll do just that. It'll duplicate the screen. So that way you have two screens opened up, um, both with your QuickBooks Online. Um, one thing to keep in mind, so it's all real time. Um, so if you make a change in this screen, um, it'll save, you might have to sometimes refresh it but um, it'll make a change in the other screen as well, if that makes sense. So um, you, you, you can have many tabs open and do work within the file and everything that you do within all those tabs are all going to make real time uh, changes. So that's a really useful tool. tool. Um, I'll show you a few um, specific examples to where I use this all the time. So let's say for example, you do a lot of your categorizations in your bank feed. So what I like to do is have the bank feed open on one screen and then usually I have two other duplicate screens open and in the one I'll have it open to vendors and then on the other one I'll have it open to an advanced search but this could depend on your business and your specific workflow but I'll explain why here in a second advanced search so the reason for this is when you're looking at your actual uh, transactions with your bank feed and you're either matching them or categorizing them, I think it's really useful to have other screens open and available so that you can search either past transactions, for example. So if you don't have a rule set up and um, there's a vendor that you know that you use pretty frequently um, and you want to be consistent, you want to categorize it uh, consistently with the same vendor, then you can easily just have this vendor screen open, search for the vendor, and then it'll show which specific categories you've used in the past with that vendor. And then whenever you go into your bank transactions, you can easily match that up. Or if you want to, you can create a rule. If you know that you've seen that you um, use this vendor a lot, then you can use that to create a rule. Um, another thing is that, say for example, you're going through and then you see maybe a transaction that you think should be a match. Um, you think that you've added an expense in the past and, you're, and it's not showing in the bank feed. Um, the option to match it, um, you can do the search. So you can search for um, the dollar amount, the vendor, um, things like that. And you can try to find that expense. And then you can use that information to match it in the bank fee so that you're not putting in the expense and then adding it again whenever you're going through your bank feed. And then that's where you have duplicate transactions and where you'll get messed up whenever you're doing your bank reconciliations. Um, another thing with this tab is that you can easily, so you can rearrange them, of course, just by holding and dragging, Then you can also take it off the screen. So if you just, like I did there, I just clicked and held it, and then you just move it off the screen, and then it creates a whole other window. And if you want to move it back, do the same thing, click, drag, and then you can bring it right back so they're side by side. Um, a useful thing, maybe for you, if you go to reports. And then here's another thing you can do as well another way to duplicate the tab. So before I showed you, you, du you double click and then hit duplicate. Another thing you can do is anywhere where there's a link in QuickBooks Online, which there's links everywhere, um, you can double click on the link and then hit open link in new tab. And then it's another way of duplicating the tab to a specific screen. So here we'll have two report screens open. So maybe what you can do is run a profit and loss on one screen for the month, quarter, whatever, and then you can run a balance sheet. And then also what you can do is you can drag this off screen. If you have a Mac, you can, uh, I don't know if you might be able to do this in Windows too, I'm not sure, but um, so you can hit the hamburger here to kind of close it, drag it so it's smaller, do the same thing on this one. 
So then you can look at your profit and loss and balance sheet side by side. And then when you're ready, if you want, you can just bring it back into the same browser, make it bigger again. So this is useful for many reasons. I use this all the time. Um, it's a lot easier if you're going through categorizing stuff, like I said, to kind of have multiple tabs open so you can search things, add things if you need to. So if you're in your, if you're in your bank, um, if you're in your bank feed, and then there's kind of a complicated transaction to where you don't want to do it in the bank feed. Maybe you want to do a journal entry or an expense, multiple light items, things like that. It's a lot easier, I think, to have it open in a new tab, create the expense in a new tab, refresh your bank feed page, and then match it that way. Rather than kind of going back and forth, it just takes a lot of time. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the tabs. Another very useful feature in Chrome with QuickBooks Online is the bookmark feature. So um, basically in any screen, you can have it in reports, and I'll show you a few specific examples. You can hit this uh, star here, and then you can add a bookmark, and you can also add folders. So if you already have a lot of um, bookmarks in your Google Chrome account, then maybe create a QuickBooks Online folder, and then you can add to that specific folder. But if you don't already have a lot of them, then all of them that you create will show up here in this top bar. So I'll show you a few specific examples of where that might be useful. So let's say that you're um, creating bills in the QuickBooks Online, open bills. There's a useful report if you are doing that called unpaid bills. So what you can do is you can run an unpaid bills report. You can customize it how you like, whether you want to, you know, this month or, you know, you can customize it how you like. And then once you have all the customization saved, then you can bookmark that. You can just name it unpaid bills. Add it to the folder if you have a folder. Hit done, and then we're gonna drag it here. So there you have it right now. Anytime you open up your Google Chrome or open up a new tab, you'll see it right here, this unpaid bills. You click on it, and then it'll automatically run that report in real time of all the unpaid bills you have in QuickBooks Online. Really good for AP. If you pay your bills every Friday or you know at the end of the day, um, every month, you can really quickly and easily just click on paid bills and you know exactly what you need to pay and then you can pay from there um, rather than going in every single time and running that same report hoping that you run it correctly with all the right settings things like that another useful one is that if you are running a lot of invoices as you go and then you either print them out and uh, mail them all the same day or if you email them all the same day so for example you do work throughout the month um, you have open invoices so you can add to them you invoice as you go as you should be and then the last day of the month is when you either email or print and send all of those invoices. Um, what you can do, so let's make a few really quick ones here. So when you're creating your invoice, um, if you click this send later box right here, and I'm not going to get into too much detail in this video, but just so you're aware of it, um, then you'll be able to run a specific report in a specific screen to where you see all the invoices that you need to send out. Um, this works for either if it's um, for email or, if, again, if you're printing them out. So you can click this send later here and then um, save and close. I'm gonna hit save and new. I'm gonna add a few just so you see, and then we'll come back and I'll show you that report. So I created a couple invoices, marked them as send later. Um, so the actual report, you don't need to get into too much detail to run this in this video, but just so you know that it is a process to um, create it. And then, so you'll see the advantage of why bookmarking it will save you a lot of time. So if you go into sales and then all sales, you can go into this filter option here and then you can choose the date. So let's say we want to do it for this month. And then delivery method. This is where we click print later or send later. That's the option that we clicked whenever we were creating those invoices before. So let's click on send later and then apply. And then we'll see those invoices that we created. So again, this would be really useful if you're creating invoices as you go throughout the month. And then the last day of the month, last day of the week, whatever it is, you send your invoices all at once. Um, so what you can do is you can bookmark this page. And title whatever you want, invoices to send. And just so you see, we'll drag it up here again. So that way, at the end of the week, end of the month, whatever it is, rather than you having to go in and remember that workflow, go to sales, filter for the date, filter for send later, what you can do is you can just open up your Google Chrome and it's right there. You can just click on invoices to send and then you'll be able to quickly just batch click them and then send them to the customers. So save you again, save you a lot of time, um, a lot of effort.